Hello, my name is Philip Whiteman. I am a senior network engineer here with Lake Tech Communications. Um, I've been getting questions from customers on how to validate AOS 8 redundancy. So as you're aware, um, controllers, redundant controllers uh, running AOS 8 um, have the capabilities of clustering to provide hitless failover and live upgrades, meaning we can lose an entire controller and it does not affect forwarding on your network. So first, let's go in and take a look at that setup. How is that set up? It's pretty straightforward. So going into my uh, mo uh, mobility conductor here, I have several different uh, uh, group levels or cluster levels. And you see most, there's nothing in most of them, but in this particular cluster here, I do have two physical controllers. So I also have a, um, a cluster service running called Campus Cluster, and I have my two controllers configured within that. You also see I have some VR PIPs here, which I'm going to talk about. Um, you know the effect on improper clustering in a little bit. Um, you may not have these in your environment. These are used for change of authority from ClearPass, so we can target the correct controller if something goes down in a redundant fashion. But um, what I want to show you here is that we do have the clustering, and we do we have added each controller into the cluster. So each controller is in the cluster. Great. So we have a cluster setup. So let's go take a look from the controller perspective, what that looks like. So on the CLI, you can run this command show, clo uh, show LC cluster group membership, and it will tell us the configuration of the cluster, we have redundancy. Um, what we're looking for here is this connection type. This connection type needs to say layer two connected in order for us to have true um, hitless failover and live upgrades. So and what does that really mean? What, what, how, what, what does, well first, what does um, hitless failover entail? So when we have a full cluster configured and this is layer two connected, any sessions that we have on the controller, high priority traffic will be synchronized, statefully synchronized over to the other controller. And we could take a look at the other controller. So we could do show user table standby. So when we run the stand standby command, it's it should show us it should show us my entry right here as synchronized over on the other side. I am not synchronized. I do not have proper redundancy. If I were to lose this controller, my client would have to manually fail over the other controller. If they're running a TCP application or something, you know, TCP is going to do a retry. It's going to establish the sessions. Life is great. However, if I was on a voice call doing like uh, you know R, um, uh, RTP, which is UDP protocol that would tear down, it wouldn't retry, and that whole session would need to reestablish, um, which usually breaks a phone call. So um, I don't have good redundancy here. So if I were had a failure, I would be, I'd be in trouble. So what do we do to figure out why that is? So how do we get it in, in that L2 connected state? So first, what is L2 connected? L2 means layer two, just you know, in general networking terminology, layer two, so VLANs, broadcast domains, layer three, um, IP. So, what the controllers do is they will attempt to do a broadcast on each one of their VLANs. And they want the other controller to hear that broadcast on their VLANs. If they do not hear that broadcast, then they will um, consider that they don't have proper layer two adjacency and they cannot put it into a redundant state. So why would that be? See, I, you know, um, I don't have side-by-side -side comparisons here, but I do have all the same VLANs configured. However, the infrastructure might not have these configured. You know, I can arbitrarily create whatever VLANs I want directly on my controllers or at the campus level. Um, doesn't mean that they actually exist on the infrastructure. So if I go over to, and I have a very simplified configuration, so if I go over to my core switch, um, we, should, we take a look at the interfaces that these controllers are connected to. You can see I don't allow all those VLANs there. So it makes sense that it's um, it's failing uh, broadcasts on some of the VLANs because the other controllers can't hear because the infrastructure is not allowing it. Now keep in mind, I have my controllers singly connected here, no LACP, there are no other switches in place, but uh, we need to make sure the VLANs that we expect to be there are indeed all the way through your infrastructure between the controllers so they can do that broadcast and hear one another. All right, so how do we figure out which one it is? You know, I could do my comparison that way, but there's a little bit easier way. I can run that same command again, show LC cluster, uh, I'm sorry, uh, show LC cluster VLAN pro status. And here it is, it tells me what VLANs are failing. It only shows you one at a time, so if you have several of them that are failing, you do have to correct them one at a time. So it is telling me 101 is failing its uh, 
Um, it's failing being heard between the two controllers. And on my infrastructure, I'm not allowing 101 through. So that makes sense. So what do we do to fix it? A um, couple things. So back over here, like I said, I could arbitrarily create VLANs. In my lab, I'm constantly creating and tearing down VLANs and doing separate, you know, doing different things or different tests. So one way I could fix it is I could just delete VLAN 101. So that would remove it off the controllers. They no longer have that VLAN that they need to run the broadcasts over, and that may correct the issue. Another way to handle it is on the controllers themselves in the cluster configuration, we can exclude VLANs from participating in that function. So I could put 101 in this list here on both controllers. So I do it on this controller. I go over here and do it on this controller. We submit that. We submit our changes. That's working on synchronizing down to the controllers. And now it uh, shows us the next VLAN that's failing. Oh, it didn't. It is actually doing that test. So it did a test that was uh, that was an anomaly there, but we did go into an L2 connected state. So now if I do show cluster group mem membership, I am in an L2 connected state. Let's check the other controller. Which I didn't run that command yet. And it, this would also show L2 connected, of course, because the other controller shows it and they are pair in the same cluster. Awesome. Now we have full redundancy and failover. Um, one thing I, I failed to show you was that those VRP um, entries that you saw in the cluster configuration, so back over here when we're looking at the actual cluster setup, I have VRP IPs. Um, I forgot to show you, but these VRPs would not have been active if I didn't have redundancy. So um, you might have, you might see issues where um, your COA is not working correctly. So now that I have redundancy working, the, 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 the virtual interfaces did come up, um, and then these, these look appropriate. So now that we also have redundancy, I, you know, I mentioned that when we look at uh, connections to the controller, these should be um, synced over to the other controller, stateful synchronizations. Let's take a look at that. There we are. So now we have user state sync. Now I'm in a position where I could yank the cord on the controller that my, tra my particular traffic is forwarding to, and I would not have any idea that that happened. My client will continue to forward data appropriately. So there you have it. Here's, there's how you, you know, the basic configuration of the cluster, how we add the controllers to the cluster, how we can exclude different VLANs from being heard. And again, I could have deleted that VLAN how we validate the, the cluster is in a fully redundant fashion, um, and how we, how we troubleshoot and fix it. So, so that's great. So if anybody has any questions, uh, you know, feel free to uh, reach out to us and be happy to get on a call and go through that uh, configuration with you or troubleshooting with you. If you have any questions on that COA, what does that mean? What, are the, what do you mean COA? What does that do for me? Why don't I have it configured in my environment? Let's talk about it. It's pretty straightforward, um, but it's a conversation that I think is important, especially if you do have a failure of a controller. You want to make sure that uh, if you're using COA in your environment, that it still continues to function. Anyway, hope everybody has a great day and look forward to you on the next video.